A drone captured a grim scene in the capital of India. Flying above New Delhi, we can see a series of intentional man-made fires. their makeshift crematoriums. Crematoriums across the city are working around the clock to help dispose of the dead. Currently, India accounts for nearly half the new COVID cases on Earth every day. Daily new infection rate is nearly 350,000, which is setting a global record. Hospitals running out of room, leaving patients on gurneys in the streets. The government forced to turn these train cars into mobile units. This desperate young woman crying out, this hospital is useless. Her mother taken away on a rusty gurney. As India's healthcare system collapses, social media has become a chorus of desperation. As young and old, rich and poor, plead for oxygen, hospital beds and drugs. In New Delhi alone, over 300 people died within 24 hours. That's more than the traditional funeral infrastructure can handle, which means that some people are forced to burn their dead. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us. To make sense of what's happening in India, it helps to go back a bit. Last year, India doctors and health officials prepared for waves of deadly COVID-19 outbreaks that never quite materialized. Instead, millions of people contracted only mild cases. Experts at the time noted the low levels of obesity in the country, the large amounts of time people spend outdoors, and the population's relative youth. There were also suggestions that previous viruses in India might have created some natural immunity. In February, India's death toll was less than 100 a day compared to 3,000 a day in the United States. So the government of Prime Minister Narendra Modi promoted a public narrative that India had conquered COVID-19. Government officials relaxed restrictions on virtually all activities, including weddings, political rallies, and religious gatherings. The northern town of Haridwar held one of the largest gatherings this year, with millions of people celebrating a Hindu festival. But by March, the virus had begun to reassert itself. Experts say a major factor is that people who previously had mild or asymptomatic cases of COVID-19 remained vulnerable to it. And recent studies around the globe suggest that mild cases confer only limited immunity. There are also indications that new variants have played a role. So amidst record-setting caseloads that have overwhelmed India's healthcare system and left people literally dying in the streets, India's local governments have now imposed new restrictions. There are now bans on travel, weddings, and non-essential shopping. The country is also trying to speed up vaccinations. About 10% of the country has received one shot, but that still leaves more than a billion people who haven't received anything. On Twitter, U.S. President Joe Biden said, Just as India sent assistance to the United States, as our hospitals were strained early in the pandemic, we are determined to help India in its time of need. The United States is now sending materials to help India manufacture the vaccine. The administration is also dispatching oxygen, ventilators, and therapeutics. And the U.S. is considering sending India 30 million unused doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine not yet approved in the United States. Terrible situation that's going on in India and other low- and middle-income countries. And there is more we can do. And I believe you will see shortly that all these things that we're talking about are on the table in India, time is certainly of the essence. In New Delhi alone, there's now a COVID-19 death every four minutes. It's the deadliest outbreak on Earth since the pandemic began, breaking the healthcare system and forcing the creation of makeshift crematoriums. By all accounts, the air in India is thick with smoke and grief.